As we head out of my hometown of Bend, Oregon, it gives me some time to reflect on how grateful I was to grow up in such a magnificent state. Now don't go thinking you should move here though. I think you'd hate it and there's no vacancy, but we'll give you the opportunity to watch from afar during this long trip out east. drive out, I also ponder how small businesses have shaped this country. From mom and pop gas stations to diners to truck parts or camping gear, it all starts somewhere. So I invited a few companies along while we explore a stretch of eastern Oregon I used to wander in my youth. I wanted to see how these guys think, get their thought process behind developing product inside the overland space and how it shapes this industry. <laughs> Jeff said like we should like create a circle around or something around this tree area or something. Sweet. Yeah. You wanna create a circle around this tree, right Jeff? Yeah. Well yeah, but like right over here. Uh, the fire's gonna be right there. There's a fire pit out there. Oh. Everything just screams I'm not from here. Aided my diesel. Yeah. He's like, it's so loud. Yeah, I was right. like, that's only because you don't have an exhaust. Yeah, no. I was right. like, you put an yeah. exhaust on that goddamn Hemi, and then you won't hear it. Yeah. So I made him cut off. We we both cut our resonators off on the rear because they're just so bulbous. Mm -hmm. We just destroy them on a trail. So we're right. both cut off at the rear oh, axle. Oh yeah, right, right. But it right. sounds perfect. Yeah. I don't even need an exhaust. Now. I didn't. I don't really hear yours. Uh, your your pickup. Not unless much. I get on it. Yeah. Uh, I it's had a, uh, no road drone. It's real yeah. quiet. But once I get to about thirty five hundred RPMs, it opens up. Yeah. So it's You'll hear it tomorrow bit, on the yeah, dunes. Yeah. <laughs> it gets real loud. Yeah. And especially that pedal commander now. Yeah, yeah. You have one? No, I had it on my Titan. I, I built a, a an XD before this. How do you like that? Well, I love the truck. I love the Cummins, truck. right? I fucking hated, I hated the transmission. It oh, they're that, terrible. It, it had that ASIN in it. Yep. But it had its own TCM, and it didn't talk to the ECM. Yeah. And then I went through the whole delete, and I uh, I did an easy link with some CC, uh, CTT tunes. and uh, Oh, man, I fought I, I just hated it. Yeah, it's where they did flybys, and we'll, we'll find just 50 cal bullets still in full form yeah. that have been shot out of, out of uh, jets aircraft, yeah. and aircrafts, well, they just and fell, you can go yeah. like 10 feet from there and find an arrowhead. And it's like cool to hold both of those and be yeah. like, That's this awesome. is what used to be a weapon and this right. is what is now. Yeah. And there's thousands of years of difference, yeah, that's, and that's, there's that's just some really cool shit around. like yeah. that you're gonna see. One of my dad's buddies went out and, and metal detected out there and found a, a company store coin for uh, the pool hall, oh. which it was for fifty cents. So my assumption oh, cool. it was is for the hookers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because it, that was a lot of money, <laughs> and and uh, 
I, I can't imagine pool call it costing 50 cents so yeah <laughs> it was like wow. yeah so it's kind of a cool piece of history because the roundhouse is still there the, the the like the foundation of it and stuff it's okay. like it's all there's like the watering ponds where they filled the steamers up and it's uh yeah it's kind of kind of neat it's like i like that kind of shit too mm -hmm. but i mean we didn't buy it for that it, it's more just a pheasant property that we were gonna yeah uh, and it's way up in no man's land so if the walkers come you know they're not gonna come they're not they're not they're not, head, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're not heading that way daryl we need you daryl yeah. get your crossbow if the hordes yeah. if the hordes of of, of 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 purple or blue helmets come on the samurai sword in there if you guys need it nice yeah hell yeah so i just need to mount it somewhere well, I realized I was, yeah, so I brought rifles, and I also brought this uh, handgun uh, that I, I use in some of my long-range competitions. Sometimes mm -hmm. they have pistol components, right? Yeah. I realized, and I brought a suppressor, too, and I knew that was illegal, so I kind of, like, it's legal hid. here. Yeah, it's here, right? It's legal. Okay, yeah. in California, it's... I like, have suppressors yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I had that hidden, different. but then I realized <laughs> that all my mags are over 10 round. That's okay here. So that was, uh, We're still in a free state here. Yeah. Barely. Barely. <laughs> Barely. Barely. Washington yeah. no longer is. Yeah. And then California is not. Yeah. So I have 30 round mags with me. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll pull my shit out later. I brought a bunch of fun stuff. Back in the early 1900s, before refrigeration was around, they would come out to Arnold Ice Cave. And they would... And then it's usually really good. Awesome. GH6 and F mount. Set it and forget it. <laughs> Last night was brutal. It got down to single digit temps, which was way off from the forecast showed. Nonetheless, we adapt and overcome. As we pack up and make ready for the day, we get a chance to see rigs in the daylight and get to know each other a little bit more. This swing right here. Right there. Oh, it's always okay. fascinating yeah. to see other people's builds. It's like an extension of their personalities. Something you'll also see is we're down a rig. Christian's power wagon was still in the shop, getting its second transmission since we left Death Valley. Because of that, I'm loaded to the gills. It will be interesting to see how well my rig does on this trip with its new setup.
name is uh, Donovan Fredrickson, and um, I'm with Skinny Guy Campers currently uh, as a co-owner and uh, I guess inventor of the of the original concept. And right now it's on a 2020 Ram 2500 that's uh, been hodgepodge mod put together and 37s on a Carly pen top and everything that I can screw glue or stick to it. <laughs> My name is Jason Bontrager and uh, right now I'm driving a 2019 Tacoma uh, TRD Pro and got it pretty well outfitted. It's actually um, getting ready to have, have a Magnuson supercharger installed and get re-geared, so I'm pretty excited about that. So my name is Eric Evans. I work for Onyx Maps, specifically Onyx Off-Road. Um, I've been in the industry since about 2020, and I'm currently driving a 2020 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road. Well, that was fun. Uh, so now that we're done here at the dunes, we're gonna cruise into town, gas up. It's a last gas for quite a while. Uh, get some last uh, minute snacks and whatnot, and some gear. I need to go to a hardware store real quick and fix my rear broken sway bar, and then we are off to the intruder crash site. Jeff, do we have a chance to air back up to? Uh, how low are you right now? 15. Oh yeah, we can air up right up here if you want to. <laughs> yeah, um, the entry point to, to really off-roading in general for me was, was hunting. Um, grew up in the south, went hunting in Mississippi and Texas, and, and to get to some of the places that you need to go, you needed a truck, um, you needed four-wheel drive. And as you kind of got deeper and deeper into that, or as I, as I got deeper and deeper into that, you start discovering more gear that you might need, recovery gear as you're moving in and out um, of maybe muddy or rough terrain areas. Um, so as you're kind of building your kit along, you kind of realize you've got kind of a sustainable mobile vehicle to go with you and take you a lot of different places. And as you get more and more comfortable um, taking those trips, you can start getting further and further away from civilization, getting out into the, the unknown, seeing new things that many people haven't seen before. And so that was really attractive to me. for since I was 12 we have my father started an RV dealership when I was 12 so I've been involved with that more or less since then and uh, encamped in all types of situations and products overland camping is not necessarily new to me but it's certainly something I'm exploring deeper uh, with our new product and, and, uh, and found it to be quite liberating and fun compared to conventional RV camping. Uh, because you wouldn't be able to do this 
with most conventional products, even towable products, uh, are, are sort of limited. And so these these truck setups that, uh, like Jeff's and, and everybody else, really expands the the range, you know, access to areas that even in my own backyard in Montana that I haven't been to in, frankly my whole life just because I didn't want to drag a trailer or didn't think I could get up there with a camper and I never really was a tent camper so it, uh, I think it's a growing segment there's a lot more in front of it than there is behind it and the industry the camping industry at, at large at least from the RV perspective is is has grown so much that traditional campgrounds are full all the time and folks have a hard time booking and finding places to camp and the, this type of camping you really don't run into that the primitive style camping so we're uh, yeah we're excited about it Obviously, it's it's calm is a compact kit, but uh, like you've done it enough to know that it's uh, there's it's like everything gets spread out, right? So there's a, a lot of setup time and a lot of takedown time, and not that I'm necessarily against that. I wanted to with a skinny guy camper to potentially limit try to include more in the, the product itself so you don't have so many individual items to get out when you arrive at camp. Simply pop it open and put it together in five minutes and you're, you're, you're ready to go to bed if you have to. I've developed a, oh, I, I guess a catalog of, of of what works for me and what works in different situations. And all of that is always in the back of my head when I was developing or in trying to influence this market. Now, as far as the Overland products, like the camping products, I love that stuff too, like the gear bags and the and the recovery gear. I mean, all that stuff is just cool to me. And um, so obviously collecting that is, is also fun. You know, part of uh, the fun of, I guess, doing an Overland setup uh, for a lot of guys is, is is starting from scratch and building it as theirs now what skinny guy does do in some ways is bypasses that you you're not collecting a rooftop tent with uh, your favorite bed rack and your uh, favorite drawer system and your uh, essentially what i'm uh, what we're uh, setting out to do is is it's more or less plug and play if you want it. I mean, we we offer it in a like it's it's ready to roll it's a self-contained rv in that small package. One of my favorite parts of what I do at OnX is actually helping other people get outside more. Um, there's a lot of people in this industry that have tons of experience, but there's far more people that have very little experience in what we're doing here. Um, when people are kind of curious about this for the first time, they've got a lot of questions. What truck do I get? What, what tires do I need? What kind of camper do I want? Where do I go? Is actually one of the biggest questions that those people have. And that's one of the questions that we're trying our best to answer for these people. Um, and What's great about it is not only are we helping people find places to go and explore, but we're helping them get there safely and return home safely, have their uh, plans shared with family members so that they know exactly where their loved ones are or can participate with their, their friends and family that they're going on trips with. And really, this is a big community event. Um, when you're going overlanding, it's not as much fun to go by yourself. You want to go with friends and family and people that are there with you to camp around the fire. And Onyx helps you do that. We're doing a lot of things like 
creating a lot of guidebook level content for trails around the country. And we've done more than 3000 trails. Where we've created guidebook content in the last two years, which is an incredible feat. Um, and we're constantly adding more and more. And as we do that, people become more trustworthy. Oh, shit. One of the interesting things that we do is actually by, the, by creating more and more content about trails and providing rich content um, like photos and descriptions and the rest of the pieces that we provide in our app, we're actually enabling more people to get out in less density. So people are able to discover places that they've never been before, that the popular, popular influencers don't know about, and that way we're actually dispersing more people throughout the country, reducing overuse of our trails, reducing how many people are fighting over camp spots because now we've opened up hundreds of thousands of miles of trails across the US instead of just the few favorites that people have. Yeah, just go back down and then on your passenger side the, the turnout's a little better than your driver that's the uh that's the first time that he hasn't made it on something with us i mean granted we haven't gone on anything like super crazy but we always find a way to get him up and i imagine i could winch him up but for what you know it's only a quarter mile up here to dead end, dead ends so it was fun though <laughs> that voice so close! I think being on this trip in Oregon, uh, having my rig be tested on all these trails, um, and I'd say specifically the trail that led out to um, the aircraft that we went and saw, um, was just great. Um, the it, it didn't look like a big hill, but the hill that we went up was it was tough, you know. And I wasn't sure how my rig with the camper on the back was going to perform. Um, at one point I thought I was gonna maybe tip over backwards, but, and I'm really glad that I didn't. <laughs> but um, but no, that was probably, I'd, I'd say one of the, the best moments. Uh, but just exploring Eastern Oregon, I, I never realized how much wilderness is out there. And I'm just so honored that um, we were asked to go on this trip and uh, very thankful for that. They used to make stuff good back in the day. I wonder where it, like, I wonder where it actually made the point of contact. Do you think it was up there? I don't know. Maybe. If that's where they could have just been going this way and it spread out. 
Oh yeah. You know, well, I, has it. I read that the pilot ejected, but he still died. It's reinforcement. I wonder if we dropped this skinny, skinny guy out of an airplane. What would happen? <laughs> We're gonna have to get these guys involved when we get our old truck and strap the shells of a skinny guy to it and roll it off a roll it off. A... Have them help us with the filming. Plumbing or something for the fuel. It could be a giant ass fuel filter. <laughs> That's crazy. Couldn't imagine. Why for a beast do you give a feast to roll the ringing red wine? But love has a funny way of running out to meet the love. Taking you into your life again and brighter. Steel too. Yeah. I mean, it even just just peeled these mm -hmm. right off. That's right just off. serious force. On September 19, 1973, A6 Intruder pilot Lieutenant Alan G. Kohler, he was only 27, and Navigator Lieutenant Commander Philip D. Duhamel, age 33, God, man, they're young, were on a low-level night training mission out of Whidbey Island Naval Air Station on Washington when their plane crashed at this location, killing both men. The debris of the A6 is left as a tribute and memorial to Lieutenant Kohler and Lieutenant Commander Duhamel, who perished in the service of their country. The remains of this plane are a historical site and should not be removed or defaced. Please respect the memory and sacrifice of these men. That's crazy, man. They're so young. Oh, I see what you mean, using the um, tow hook? That won't be strong enough, huh? Yeah, no. Donovan. How bad is it? Pretty giant rock. Yeah. I actually almost did make it up that area where I was being stuck to. Oh, really? Yeah, and then I had to, I wanted to get more speed, and then I didn't see this rock. <laughs> Let's see if we can where's your, hey, where's your pro eagle? That's how I was lifting myself up and making that ramp in the rear. Throw eagle that right was, here. That was on the bottom of your Holy moly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if you're out here by yourself exploring, you should do, you know, after you be on Instagram stuff, you do this on your own? If I got a bigger rig okay. with this? Different all road, not different bigger rig. <laughs> <laughs> if I did it again, fuck, I don't know. Dude, this would be cake in my hand over. Yeah. You didn't suck, I could do it. And then see that ridge right there? That's what we'll go we'll be on the other side of that ridge all day and it swoops down. Are there any camping spots in, the, in this area over here? Fuck <laughs> no. We have to make our own anywhere out here. Oh. It's gonna be like that tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, hopefully nobody's at, I mean, it's going to be a Saturday, so there's probably, there could be people at Shirk Ranch. Hopefully not, so we can actually camp there. I think that would be so killer. Wait, how far is it that we were supposed to go towards that way? 
about another hour or so or more but i would rather not do that tonight because no. it's gonna once that sun drops the temperature is gonna start dropping and i want to like cook steaks in a t-shirt and just relax tonight like actually sit down we have really good whiskey and bourbon Great whiskey. or rye bought some really good top shelf whistle pig and then we've got some top shelf oven top shelf oven mm. good time nice. This easy is... now. That was a great time. Again, overlanding as a definition is, uh, if, frankly, is different for everybody. Somebody will say, well, you got to cross international borders, uh, you got to live out of your rig, or, you know, oh, the overland industry has gotten much broader. It's the weekend warrior, it's the guy going, you know, from Alaska to Terra del Fuego, right? I mean, it's, it's, it can be any one of those things. And I like that it's being more inclusive and it's being, uh, you know, less pretentious, uh, I guess is, yeah. And may, I, not that it, that it was pretentious, but it is more inclusive and the products that are being used in the space are, are, are vast and broad. Vans, um, travel trailers, products like ours, rooftop tents, uh, like with jeans, uh, you know, Audi with a with an FSR on. I mean, like that. I mean, like, like you get to define it, which I think is um, awesome. You know. Don't mind the rubbing. <laughs> That's much better. Wrapping our brains around the magnitude of what happened here in 1973 of two young pilots who left home to never come back is heavy. That tragedy combined with a previous wreck of the P-38 Lightning casts a large dark cloud on this rim. What are the odds? Why this exact spot? These are the questions we ask ourselves heading to camp through the rolling hills and dusty sage of the high desert.
Camp is a special time. Grills and griddles fired up, tunes on and adult beverages flowing. You know damn well good food and even better stories fueled by libations are on the horizon. No, I mean, it, I, I honestly, I mean, I told you going up there, I'm probably gonna have to winch you up. Mm -hmm. I did not expect you to actually do it on your own. Well, but. the part that I kept uh, sliding on, I was, I almost made it, but then I started uh, digging into the dirt. So when you're like two wheeling, uh -huh. and it's going and it doesn't do anything, is it just cutting you off completely? Um, why, are, why aren't you just like brake standing on it and then just fucking dropping the brake? Yeah, I was go? trying to do that. It wouldn't do it for some reason. I, I think I'm just way too uh, heavy with the tent and all really? the gear inside. Not enough horsepower, huh? We need to have Garrett Ellis swap it. Huh. Hello, fellow Russians. Are we still at war? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it was a nice wake up at two in the morning with wind. Yep. Jesus. Okay. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't bad at all. I didn't even use my heater or anything. Yeah. It was great. And I have cell service in my tent. sunrise gorgeous yeah the yeah. desert sunrises are the best oh yeah okay all right let me get this one broke down yes real quick morning guys What I 
dust in the desert. You know, it's funny that we always do these trips in the desert because uh, they have the most resources as far as trails go, but it's it's funny that, you know, there's, you find the most history out here, like old history, 1800s and, and you know, early 1900s, turn of the century buildings and ranches and you don't see a lot of that over in like the coastal area, like the coast range and in, in, here in Oregon which is funny because it has the most resources for living animals and water and uh you know tons of forest and you know fish everything and out here there isn't shit but it had the most resources for wealth so you had ranching out here cattle and horses you know there's legendary uh, i think in it, as far as the whole world uh there's the biggest uh ranch out here for horses and one man had it for many many years and then when the automobile came along it bankrupted him but uh, he was shipping horses to like Europe. And, you know, for, for all that uh, to happen, uh, hold on here, I gotta check my maps, we are off. Yeah, we're off. We can go up here and then cut back over. We need to be on those power lines. So, I heard me talking and not paying attention to talking. my map. But we, uh, I zigged when I should have zagged. I'm gonna, we uh, need to be over to the right here. I'm gonna try to find a road that cuts back over. Oh shit. Gene ain't making it over that. Um, we're gonna have to turn around. This cattle guard is raised and Gene won't make it. So we're gonna have to turn around and go back. Well, we're gonna get back on the right heading here, but it, like I was saying with, with the history out here, the wealth, you know, you, you had a guy out here that had a giant horse ranch and was shipping to like Europe and I guess the Middle East even, um, but you had gold out here and silver and, you know, different types of mines uh, that, you know, people got very wealthy off of. Uh, military does a ton of stuff out here. They still do. I mean, this morning we saw fighter jets circling us. We saw the A6 and the P-38 that crashed. You know, those that was 1945 and 1973. So the history out here is just so much, you know, the, the reach of it is, is, is massive. But you don't, you just don't find things like that on the coast. And, you know, there's a give and take on both of it because out here it's dry. It's a, there's a ton of dust. You have to contend with that. You got wind, you know, higher amounts of wind. Um, each day you almost run into it uh it's colder the the you know there'll be a big shift like today it'll get probably close to 70 degrees and then tonight it'll be you know in the high 20s or low 30s and you know you can contend with that where on the coast you know it's greener there's you know there's more to look at as far as like you know it's a different type of beauty and but you're you know it, you're probably getting rained on. Uh, the temperatures kind of stay more flat, maybe in the 50s and 60s. Doesn't dip down too low, except for you know hard parts of winter. But yeah, the desert's a desert's a crazy thing. So take me to the As a kid, uh, we would go. We would go on a lot of fishing trips. We would go on a lot of road trips. We had a small pop-up, small Jayco pop-up, and uh, we would go kind of all over the Midwest, um, up into northern Michigan, the UP. Uh, do a lot of road trips, and uh, 
yeah, it just was always a blast. We'd take our bikes, and I had three sisters, so we'd all take our bikes along and ride around the campground. And, but that was kind of my first taste of getting, of going camping. And then uh, as I got into high school and college, I did a, a ton of road trips. My grandpa founded a company called Jayco, and I know a lot of people know that name, but uh, invented the, he invented the pop-up camper. So we uh, did a lot of camping in, uh, in, in pop-ups. Early on, that's what we built a lot of. Uh, so I grew up in that business. Um, but I was always, as we would build bigger products, I was always uh, wanting to redesign the small ones. And uh, just because they're lighter weight and easier to use, and um, I just felt like we kind of began building a lot of what I call fat products, fat and bulky products. And uh, so once we sold the company about six years ago, I took some, I just took a break. I took about four years off and decided to get into private equity. So I did a lot of investing and got to know that industry and how to raise money and whatnot. And, uh, but yeah, I decided to get back into making products because I, I, I did a lot of mountaineering and hiking and I always wanted to have a way to get as close to base camp as possible or figure out how to shorten the hikes by way of getting into the uh, into the backcountry a little bit more. And that's partly how we ended up with Skinny Guy. Um, and I'm not the only partner in the business. Donovan is uh, my partner there and we co-developed the product. But, but yeah, it's just been a blast. I mean, it's been a blast to be able to use our trucks as our, as our uh, platform to go further into the countryside and see all the great parks that are, especially in the West. Unfortunately, not as many are in the East, which is where I'm based, but um, just it's just been a blast to, to uh, outfit our trucks and have a camper that is sort of the icing on the cake, if you will, of, uh, of our trucks, so. part too about it and it's like you can see it's like oh no you can't go here <laughs> so there's you can see the road that goes around it that we'll take but it's uh yeah it pulled up but it's just a state of oregon and then if you look next to it, it says state of oregon DEQ, department of uh, environmental quality and uh which is it's funny as hell but you can actually see if you pull it up in the map you can see the grids of where they have shit buried yeah i can see the mountains out here yeah Oh, that is cool. Tornado. That's cool. Somebody was working on it and then fucked up. You can see the chip marks in it. Yeah, we found one, another one back here. What am I doing? Question of my life is it? Is that metal? Great. What is this? Hey guys! Guys! This land is brutal. To think people settled here and called this barren landscape home is hard for me to comprehend. These people were hard, forged from a different material. Although it's now abandoned and since used as a military disposal and artillery range, it draws us in by curiosity. 
What was it like if only sand and rock could speak? I think Onyx's presence in the overlanding industry is is really important and needed. Um, there's there's not a lot of companies like Onyx that are that are doing the things we're doing that care about the things that we care about. Um, and ultimately, our biggest goal is to keep trails open and keep public land access available for everybody and expand that. And that's what I'm really most excited about. As more and more people learn about these opportunities to go and venture further off the pavement more and more people become interested in that. We can offer uh, great opportunities for these people to get out and enjoy themselves outdoors. By preventing these trails from being shut down um, due to overuse or actually lack of use in some cases, um, we're enabling adventures for a lot more people in a lot more places for generations to come so that our children and their children can enjoy these exact same opportunities that we have um, and have fun doing it at the same time. Oh, they are, aren't they? I don't know what that is. That's not. Let me look at it real quick. Like a. Oh, it's squaw fish. Yeah. Squaw. Yeah. Oh, I feel less bad for him now. I was like, God damn it. Those are some. I was like, those are some hardy trout living in that shit. Well, he's got, no, he's got, uh, they, no, well, he has a suppressor on his, so it won't be too bad, but the other gun is going to be very loud, and my AR is going to be very loud. My AR might actually be louder. enough rounds for everybody.
I'd rather you not lose hearing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd shoot straight at uh, like, uh, the tape that's just 8810. What's that? That's 8810. Yeah. Yeah. That is? Yeah. Go. Yeah. Bungee did? <laughs> you just lean it, yeah, lay it on the uh, bush oh, behind you. <laughs> uh, mags up. So. Yeah. So that's how you manage your rear position. Is you use this hand to kind of uh, manipulate the rear position. Oh, uh, thanks. Yep. Okay, so you need a little wind, so go a full minute and a half. So that's a hash, one of the tall hashes. Hold off to the left. I think I, think I missed it. I think you went over the top. <laughs> that trigger is very, yeah, very light. sensitive. <laughs> yeah, it's a light trigger. <laughs> You guys uh, crest over and you guys start seeing all these killer plateaus and mountains and stuff this is heart mountain down here uh, on the left side that's halfway between that and those giant plateaus out there those are the Steens mountains and we'll be hitting those eventually uh, and that's about 10,000 feet in elevation or so because we're we're uh, I haven't even looked on my onyx but I think we're probably right around fourth five thousand feet right now probably five thousand feet but uh, once we get down here to heart mountain you guys are gonna start seeing a ton of wildlife Is there a bypass? Damn it. Open 15th to December 1st. Honestly, that's probably our best bet is to try to go back and, and get on that trail, I think, and then find a place to camp. 
because that will actually take us to the Heart Mountain Hot Springs. So basically, I got this part of the trail um, from a friend um, that's a YouTuber who does this a lot, and I've seen him do it in the winter, but evidently he's doing it in December or November maybe. But he did tell me it's closed yeah, this time. How do you again. plan on getting to? Getting us to a closed trail. The Barnhard Barnhardy Road. Yeah, it's closed. Yeah, Barnhardy is closed. Oh, well, is that why it's pink? Yeah. Okay. So we could track backtrack to that, um, and that puts us closer to gas the next day. Dude, I'm so bummed about that. That is a bummer. Shirk Ranch is so fucking cool. Well, say la vie, right? Okay, let me back up. <laughs> God damn it. Well, they wouldn't call it an adventure without one fuck up. That's right. Yep. It's better. It's. I'll take one check engine light and a fucking closed road over like. A, a bad transmission. Oh. All I see is tire in my mirror or my camera. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, Jason and Donovan and uh, everybody else, just to uh, keep you up to loop, we're gonna drop back down to this ranger station, and then we're gonna take a trail that I know is open. Um, that's gonna take us closer to Alvord Hot Springs. Um, so tomorrow it's gonna be a relatively short day to get to Alvord, so we'll be able to fuck around a whole lot. But as we're driving out, if you guys see a place that you wanna camp, just mic up. Wow, well, that happened. I mean, it's the joys of adventure, right? I mean, it's it's gonna happen eventually. Um, that road does not show closed on any of our maps, and we have an Onyx guy here. So, you know, some information never gets passed through. I mean, I even just looked over because I have a secondary map that I use and it's not showing closed either. So who knows at this point, what the hell? But I mean, that's a huge disappointment because I wanted to take these guys to Shirk Ranch, which has such an awesome history. I mean, it's, it's, it's so well preserved and uh, you can camp right in the middle of it. God. That sucks, man. That really sucks. Plan B. So hopefully we'll... Uh, I've never been up this road, so who knows what we'll see. I'll, and it's new for me, which is going to be awesome. Um, yeah, we'll find something. The show ain't over. The show ain't over. All the antlers and stuff they have all hanging out here. It's really neat. Dude, he doesn't give a shit. He took a photo. He's gonna bolt any any second now. <laughs> oh, he's taking a shit. <laughs> Actually, he's gonna have a piss first. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. Frankly, we are quite different than pretty much anything that's out there. But what that means is is awareness uh, and whether or not it makes sense to people. Does it make uh, so? That's what we're finding out now. That's why we're here. Uh, that's uh, we, that's why we like to uh, joining you guys and trying to get some context and some feedback on you know what you know, what does that product look like to other people and, and now we got some folks out uh, with the product and beginning to give us some feedback about what they're because obviously it being our baby uh, we lack objectivity when it comes to and we're not going to be able to use it in every sort of situation or scenario that our consumers are and uh, so we're, we've got some early adopters that are very open-minded about that and and are helping us find flaws too and it's like i said it's not 
our version of an existing concept where we had a lot of groundwork already done for us, right? We had to essentially uh, reimagine the entire machine. It's uh, 100% new. most ghetto shit I've ever done in my life, but it looks so awesome. <laughs> Down a truck and uh, you have to cram everything into one and the suspension can't handle it much. And, uh, oh man, I bet this butter got cold again. Ah! Oh, do your thing heat. Anyways, I, I don't have a, one of my big camp boxes with me. I just took the bare minimum. So this is what you get. it all up. My wife hates this, by the way. At least she likes it all separate and do it on your own, but this is the way you do it right here. Yeah, we can, uh, that. All right. Oh my uh, grab a fork. Right be, uh, should be some right there. Here you go. Here you go. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome. There. Oh. It's not the prettiest setup, because we are down a truck and uh you know when that happens you, you know we're already over full in this one i mean my suspension can't handle it we're bottoming out um i desperately need another vehicle to be here with us to help us with camera crew and all that type of stuff but uh you know you do what you have to do and make do with what you have and hope for the best here you go chief oh thank you sir you could eat a whole fucking box of this my ass no. Oh. Yeah, actually, I could. I would. I'm probably gonna shit myself tonight, though. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, we finally had a night that wasn't single digits. It was okay, but not great. The long days and cold nights are starting to take their toll, and everyone is showing it on their faces. The discomfort hidden behind real smiles. The deeds we do to attain the lust for adventure. Isn't that the truth? looking for a cup of coffee that was not real flavored like uh, sugars and creams and all that stuff walked in there and he was doing pour overs and it was just this phenomenal tasting uh, hot uh, pour over and it was good so he's looking for a partner and and yeah we just hit it off well and here we are so
Yeah, so there's a there's a wind advisory now for Lake Malheur County. We're in Malheur, I believe. Um, actually, all the way through central and eastern Oregon, uh, like 60 to 70 mile an hour winds that could sustain. So if it's a constant wind, the, these tents can only take so much. Like I've been in some pretty heavy gusts with my soft tent, but the hard tents, um, they are built better, but they're also more rigid. So I, I you know, they're not going to flex as much as mine is. And, you know, these guys are going to take off on Monday. We may divert, um, have to call it, you know, quits an extra day. I hate to do that, but also you got to look out for the safety of everybody. So um, there's other things we can do too. So um, we have friends down in Salt Lake City. I have to go buy a puppy down there. So <laughs> I'm going anyway. So maybe we'll just take a little road trip down there. Um, find some cool stuff to do. But um, I mean, the wind's already kicking up today. This is a southwest wind. Uh, it'll be a northwest wind um, come tomorrow or come Monday. But oh, tomorrow is Monday, isn't it? Jeez, the days are all, they're all jacked up on me. I just know numbers now. I just know it's the third, so. How is that? Right, biscuits and gravy. Dude, it's fucking good. <laughs> Never had biscuits and gravy before. The destination changes daily. God forbid we stay in the same place for two days without a rig breaking down. Damn it! My hand slipped and then I went to catch. Ah, damn it! Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck. Ugh. Fucking not my day. I am over that shit. Now I gotta change. God damn it. Fields, Oregon, a quaint stop before the Alvar Desert. Although the sign says population 120, that's, well, it's debatable. If Charles Fields knew in 1881 that this little town would boast the best goddamn milkshakes known to man, he would have at least put a sign out for him. Good ass food though. Mm -hmm. Burger's a little dry, but tasty. You know it's good when they give you it with a spoon and not a fucking straw. straw.
this is the uh, Alverd Desert, which is, I've only been out here a couple times uh, when I was a kid. We used to come out here. But uh, it's been a, quite a long time. I mean, it's been probably, oh man, 18 years since I've been out here. Uh, last time I was out here, Paul, who now owns the Hot Springs, which most people don't know this, but the majority of Hot Springs you go to are private property. Somebody owns that property and then they let people come out and either camp or use it for free. Um, this is a pay place, um, used to not be. But the good thing is, is guys like Paul are kind of conservation minded, so they're not making a huge park out of it. You know, he limits the amount of people that come in and out. Um, he doesn't add a bunch of pools and, you know, excavate and, you know, kind of jack the earth up. He's conservation minded, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to come back out here and meet him personally and kind of hear his story about this. But uh, the coolest part is the playa. You can drive out on this playa. Most of them, especially this time of year, are too dry or too wet and you just kind of sink into them. So this one can handle big rig like, rigs like ours. So I think what we'll do is we're gonna set up camp and uh, we'll set up camp, we're almost there. And then what we'll do is uh, I'm gonna unload everything off this piggy so I can free up some weight so we can have a little bit of fun out on the playa. We're unfortunately at the very start of a windstorm. We've already got multiple warnings through our radio that uh, they're gonna have 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts, not to be near uh, wooded areas because it's supposed to be pretty bad. So we're hoping that maybe we get a little bit lucky and it kind of chills out, but right now you can see out on the playa, it doesn't look good. It's cool, all this white stuff, it's alkali. It's uh, for many, many, many years, they, it's what they used to make kitty litter out of. And I know that because my grandma worked for a place called Kitty Diggins, Christmas Valley, Oregon. It was like one of the number one producers of kitty litter. So we're waiting for the owner, Paul, to get here. I guess he lives down the way. And uh, he's gonna kind of give us a tour of the place, show us some bunk houses. drink by the case, that's a good coincidence. All right. No shit. For destinations. The Alvord Desert was a hot spot. It was on all the So I bet there's a line of people trying to get in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it's... My name is Paul Davis, and uh, my family and I own the Alvord Ranch and the Alvord Hot Springs. Well, we, we bought the Alvord Ranch in 1970, and the Hot Springs was part of the ranch at that, as it still is today. Our family's been in the ranch in business forever, and and my dad was coming to the age of needing a place to go, and so Grandpa bought this for Dan. Uh, well, the Hot Springs has always been, up until 2012, uh, family's opinion was it wasn't a big enough issue, and it wasn't a concern to not let the public use the Hot Springs. It was always, it was open before that, and um, we continued to just let the public use it free of charge. And then in 12, I had an incident down here, and um, at that time I realized something that with people so happy today and liability reasons that I decided that we should do something different down here. And so you have four choices by owning this. You can continue to let the public use it free of charge and hope that day never comes and stick your head in the sand, but you all know that that's an issue. Number two, you could, you could close it down. Uh, but you've got to realize that why would you close it down when, when, as you found out with the last option, that there is a lot of good people in this world. There's a lot of good, there's some jerks and pricks too, but there's a lot of good people. And the more you find out, you got, I have, I have an, uh, an audience now that really, I've got to return people. And, and I, that's what I understand now is how many people are good people that want to be here and they're willing to pay me something for it and they understand where I'm going. Um, so you can't close it down. It'd be tough to close it down. Uh, the public already in, hates ranchers anyway because they think we're jerks, which we are, but but um, uh, I didn't see any point of closing it down. The third option would be to sell it 
and you got to realize that the next owner that would own it, or the first owner to own it, is going to pay me a pretty penny. Therefore, he's got bank payments to make, and he's going to make this a destination resort. He's going to, his plan, if he's smart, he'll run this thing for 10, 15 years, run it hard, and make oodles of money, and then leave. And then he'll leave my family uh, the problem of still having to live here tomorrow and facing the, the, um, the problems he creates, if you will. So with that, it's not for sale because you find out you can't control who he sells it to the next guy. And I don't want to have issues. You could have a, have somebody who would want to put nature hikes through your ranch. You could have somebody you just could not get along here that would make uh, life a living hell. So it's not for sale. It's just end of story. I've chosen to go the route of, of putting it together like we're doing. And I've realized something that um, it's taken me a few years to figure out where I'm going with this picture. But you realize just what what a what a spectacular thing situation this is that I have that nobody else in the world has. My family with the hot springs. You've got the mountain behind me that's just a gorgeous son of a bitch, and you got uh, the lake bed down here that's neater than hell to play on, and then you got my dumbass hot springs. But between the three of these things, it's a beautiful piece of country, and it, it, it all ties together. and And you got to realize what special thing this is. And you got to realize that you have to somehow control it and keep it special. And therefore, uh, I started last fall implementing that we're only going to have so many campsites here. 25, I think, is all we're going to shoot. You think about that, that's 50 people a day. That's a lot of people for that hot springs to entertain. Uh, 50 people, 25 campsites doesn't seem like that many, but it is. And a common question people ask me is, why don't you put another um, soaking pool in? And the and the, uh, the I ask him right back, why are you here? And everybody's answer is, it's because it's solitude of the special. It's it's low keyed. It's quiet. Nobody's here. I said, so you put another pool in, that's just going to bring more people. And the instant your answer is, you answered yourself. You're going to say, let's don't put the pool in because you're going to just ruin the place. Um, and that's what I've chose to do. We're going to leave it the way it has been, and I'm going to control the usage. And um, I see ourselves being booked out a year from now, a year in this place, because I'm going to offer something that's not, that's unique, that not you don't get. Um, other hot springs are, are in a little bit different mindset than what I have. Um, I, I do like money. Don't believe, don't be thinking I don't. But I also realize that I have to sleep here tomorrow. My family has to stay and live here. We're, we're not figuring on leaving. So you have to make something that's um, tasteful for everybody. And that, I don't want to make this Disneyland. This is not who I am. I won't be there. I'm, I'm kind of controlling it with that issue. So it's rustic. It's low-key. I got these bunk houses in that, that meets the, uh, the, uh, the, the need for people. They come down here unprepared. Or you get a weather, a storm moves in and a tent blows away. And that's not uncommon. And you got the bunk houses that, that shelters people. We've been here for... 53 years now and there's something else i'm doing that's not not common um dad's we've, we've entered in agreement with the fish and game for years uh when you buy a hunting license in this hunting license in the state of oregon part of the money generated from hunting licenses goes back to the access and habitat program and so dad's been allowing i've continued we're allowing the the hunters access across our property to get to the mountain to hunt for hunting um when i opened the hot springs it opened my eyes on something you don't see when you're digging post holes or moving cows you don't see that they've seen here and that's the amount of people that are coming out here wanting to you to enjoy the steens mountain and so the protocol is today to to get access to the steens mountain as of today you have to come down here to the hot springs and show me a current hunting license if you don't have one we happen to sell them here but a hunting license is a membership, whatever you want to call it, that gets you access to the Steens Mountain. And you have to check in. And uh, with all that, we've been doing that for quite a few years. Um, so I'm not denying the, access, the public access to the Steens. I'm just, again, controlling it. Uh, if you don't, I believe, again, if you don't control something, you destroy it. And uh, it's interesting. If you look at a a map of the Steens Mountain in 1985 and look at one today, you'll see less of human footprint on the side of the Steens today than you did back then. And there's way more people here now. 
Um, so I think we're, we're doing okay. We're protecting them out too. Anyway, this is a unique piece of country. It really is. The thing I've learned out here is as the older I get, the more of a middle environmental jerk face I am. But I realize something that you don't realize when you're 25. As I've, I've grown up, I mean, shooting signs and tearing things up. I've done my fair share of being an ass. I have. But um, when you get older, you, you don't realize the beauty that, that you have, especially the opportunity I have, until you get old enough to see what, you've, what, you're, uh, what you're doing. Yeah. I've got neat stories to tell you, but I don't want to tell the whole, the whole public. But I've I've had my share of, of uh, troubles around here. But uh, but after you get old enough, you realize what beautiful place this is, and it does that. And so my kids don't get. I know what goes on, so my kids don't get to do half the crap I did. So, but I think we've hit a limit. We're I got some good people living, working for me, and things are okay. I mean, it's you know. Um, We've, we've hit a pretty good spot. I think we're, I think I'm happy. I stagger a little bit in the Delta Four helicopter uh, Delta formation. Yeah, sure, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> 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 like, get a little more data for you guys in uh, an angle. Do you want us to do that over the uh, next five tenths of a mile? <laughs> Tenth of a mile. <laughs> <laughs> Are we done delting? Damn. Oh my goodness. Look how fast he's going. Is this hauling. Feels like this thing goes forever. Just... I feel like we're in uh, Mad Max. <laughs> Got her up to 98, 95. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I wish the uh, weather more cooperated more with us for you guys on this trip. It was no, bad. It really it wasn't bad. I mean, the weather wasn't too bad. It's just the wind, and and you know, it's been like piss poor timed. But it'll be a little windier. I mean, it, it could be rainy and shit, which would have been even worse. But I'm just actually, glad to be here and not in Indiana. <laughs> yeah. So, where you get I mean, to see mountains? Is, yeah. And this exactly. has been totally yeah. something that I did not expect. Really? Um, what did you, you know, expect? I, I, well, every time I think of Oregon, I think of like this lush forest, right? Right. And the West Coast. Right. The, the and, West Side. Uh, yeah. And then even when I did research through this area after learning we would be through here, it just didn't seem as dramatic as it is in real life. It's fucking unreal, yeah, isn't it's it? It's gorgeous. It's amazing. We already broke enough shit in Death Valley where I was like, I kind of just want. Just that unique overland experience of just going through rolling hills, and even if it's just on gravel, and we did do a lot of sand and playas, and 
So it was definitely not out of, you know, it was out of the norm. But it was really cool seeing your guys' rigs with these and how capable it is. It's like, it makes me like super jealous, especially with my ass in dragging everywhere. <laughs> but how like, you guys are like a hotel on wheels, man. It's so rad, like how much is packed into that little thing. I mean, it just looks like you have a camper, or like a camper shell on the back. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, Taj Mahal. Yeah. Super light, easy to set up. I mean, I think the best, I think Donovan and I have got a good combination going where he's out west and can really get out and test a lot of the, the, pro, the well, the product and also suggest a lot of changes to it and yeah. improvements. But me getting out here, it's, this has been, I mean, like I'm told, this is just a blast getting out in the mountains. Yeah. I've always loved the mountains. Um, but I think we build really good, really good products in Indiana. We're really good at, we're really good craftsmen. So well, that's the, um, the hub for anything RV. Yeah. Yeah, we don't like to call this an RV. It's really, no, it's, no, really no. A, it's really, it's really an overnight yeah. camper. Like, God but, damn uh, it! <laughs> but, uh, but a lot of those are built there. I mean, besides Skinny Guy, I mean, it's just been a blast hanging out with you guys. Yeah, uh, yeah I like you it, know, man. You, Jeff, and Eric, you, and and everybody. So yeah, it's uh, Good time. other enthusiasts, other enthusiasts. That's in what this, the, the, this that's the whole and, cool thing about like overlanding is. Like it's fun to like obviously see new, the, the new country I think is like the biggest reward. It's sure. seeing places you've never been before and like really appreciating the beauty of what's really out there. Cause like I've been to Montana and, I'm, and I've been there multiple times. And every time I go, I'm just in awe of shit or Death Valley, which is like, I go all the time, it's close to me. Um, and then obviously I grew up around here, but every time I come, I see something new. And like Evan and I were talking while we were driving, I was like, oh shit, I didn't see that last time I was here. Or this has changed. But it's getting to know the community that's around it yeah. and like the camaraderie and everything that, that is developed through it. That's just like, I mean, it's irreplaceable. And it's cool to see like the small business side of things on how it affects, you know, propel this industry and community. And, you know, without companies like you guys and like Onyx who like give us tools to be able to go out and do shit like that. Like I remember doing this stuff when it was just called car camping right. and uh, or bike right. camping. You know, I had a tent on my bike and wherever I, you know, once before it got dark, I set up a camp and then the next day, boom, I was out. We're using paper stuff. It's so easy now to just pull a phone up and be like, holy shit, that's where I can go. And or and I get to a new spot and I like click a little button and it tells me, oh, here's this trail. And it's rated a five out of a ten or something like that. I mean, it's like the greatest tool. It's just yeah it's awesome seeing all the the information on the map and then knowing exactly where you are on that map is yeah. also pretty helpful i mean we're out on the playa today and mm -hmm. i mean sure we all knew a general direction but i'm pretty sure without a track that we had tracked all the way yeah. back out there we would yeah. have gotten back to the edge tracked back along just trying to find yeah. where we came from and, yeah. and looked at that but Instead, we got the speed 60 miles an hour straight in a beeline to where yeah. we right exactly where we yeah. entered. Yeah. yeah, I used my track to get back, and you know, I just yeah. I kept I kept going over it like this. <laughs> Cause, cause it was, yeah, you know, I was like, I'm like, oh, I'm on the other side of it. Of course, I was having a ball. Yeah, you know, just was trying to set fun. a skinny guy land speed record. Yeah, shit. <laughs> 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 we're just like, we're like, oh yeah, where he goes, Donovan. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the next things. That's one of the next things. Bonneville soft flats. We're gonna be the fastest truck yeah. camper. Hell yeah. Fastest, hey, truck, fastest RV ever. Right? Yeah. <laughs> on the track, you've got evidence, so you've got the speed associated with it. So you do. Yeah. Did yeah. I? Yeah. I should, I should look back. We'll I be know. right there when you get your Guinness World Record. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure to get to know what I would now call friends. A startup company, a larger scale company that continues to grow. Both share common goals, beliefs, and ethics in an industry so large that it's easy to get lost in. 
With two thirds of the parties leaving, we decide to see what the hype is all about in this hot spring and what it has in store despite the weather. Maybe you'll get good. It's not that bad, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. That's what happens when you're a whale. You just want to float all the time. <laughs> These things keep moving underneath me. Lower? No, these are all the same. Is it just same? deeper over there? Well, I know you're smaller than me, but still. It's just, I'm kind of floating too. They all float down here. They all float there. Wait, what was that, what was that from? What movie? It is. Oh, right, right. Now it's coming in now. Good move. Yeah, she said. Guys, have a good day. Take it easy. Take care. Probably doesn't bother you as much because I'm, you know, I'm a fucking walrus and I retain heat. Whoa. That's so cool. And those dust cool. clouds. Yeah. Yeah, one of the biggest surprises that we had along the trip, or at least for myself, was some of the desert playas and dry lake beds that we got to visit along the route. Um, and in associated with those with those dry lake beds was some of our kind of nation's military presence. Um, a lot of really cool opportunities to see um, testing ranges or remnants of, of days gone by. Um, and sitting out there on the playa actually kind of makes you feel super small as well. Um, on our last day in the Alvar Desert, you could sit out in the middle of the playa and look around and 360, there were just gorgeous mountains. You had the Steens Range backing right up to the, the playa and being able to drive out there was a total awesome benefit that I'd never imagined that we would get to do. Um, it felt like you were the only person on earth um, at some points, or maybe you weren't even on earth um, because it was just that unique. Um, and as we were out there, you know, we got a nice windstorm that ended up moving through. Um, tents were up, fabrics were, you know, whipping in the wind. And I even think we ended up sleeping in the cab of the truck on the end of the night because I think it was 70 mile an hour winds as we were shaking in the truck and uh, moved everybody inside. And it was just as comfortable and fun. And the next day we got up and the wind had kind of died down and it was uh, more enjoyable. So um, there's always surprises in these things. It's really good to be prepared for anything that's coming at you. Yeah, the future of Skinny Eye Campers, um, as far as what we've got, what I'm looking forward to in the future is getting all of our models done. Um, we've, we'll have seven total models and every every single truck bed out there will have a product for. Um, all, and we'll have four different trim levels of a variety of price points from bare bones all the way up to what we call kit caboodle. Um, we're going to develop um, a trailer that allows actually allows you to dock a skinny guy camper into so you could pull it behind an SUV or uh, or even an Audi R8 if you wanted to if you have a hitch on an Audi R8 um, or a Porsche Cayenne or, or whatever um, whatever your vehicle we're also going to come out I think with a even more bare bones bare bones so it'll be more of a, uh, a camper shell uh, or a truck truck cap shell with a bed on top so for the for the guy or gal that wants to just go super light that could be the answer for you. So, but we're really excited. And there's even other products that we've talked about that we just, um, that are on the radar, but we don't have a, uh, we haven't started developing them yet. So, but yeah, there's just a lot of opportunity. Hey, let's uh, go to our right a little bit and just get some photos of just our rig together. Okay. This, we got the fucking German fuzz over here. <laughs> Stop where you are. Circle up on me, these tiny details. You took the bay and ran away. Why are you looking like that? Why are you so misunderstood?
react Am I faking what is true? I can see you've backtracked But you haven't got a clue Cause I'm so caught up on all these tiny details That you took the bait and ran away Why are you looking like that? Hi, hi Millie, what are you doing? What are you doing?